If you got somebody that's just irrational, just like, let them be irrational. Even better is finding a distressed seller that their personal finances are distressed. They got a good property with you know personal financial distress. Thank you, Jim. He says, Here, here's my question. I have a neighbor to next to one next to one of my investment property who is pretty much a slumlord who keeps his properties in disrepair, a broken car and backyard and such. This individual almost every year for the last seven years has put out a for owner a for sale by owner. I have a friendly relationship with this individual, but it seems uh, but he seems to want an unreasonable price for his shithole. As far as I can tell, the individual purchased the property very early in their career and probably has no debt on the property. I uh, would like to hear your thoughts regarding how to deal with uh, such a situation or sell it. Yeah, it sounds like he just goes fishing once a year. He doesn't seem like he needs to sell it or he's even necessarily wants to sell it, uh, but he, you know, he wants to sell it for the right price. And, um, you know, the, his idea of the right price might be, you know, absurd and irrational. You know, or there might be some circumstance in the future where he does need some money and he's willing to be a lot more reasonable. So I, I don't know which, but uh, if he puts it out there every year and, and it never sells, then, uh, you know, that that's, seems like a, uh, probably what's, the, what's going on. Jonathan, Jonathan, hi Derek. Uh, in your previous rental business, did you delegate dealings with uh, public to good property managers or you were mainly managing it yourself at the time? Uh, can having a real estate portfolio truly be hands off or is the only way to do this via REITs? Uh, thank you, sir. Um, man, it's a pain in the ass. You gotta go deal with a lot of humans and, you know, and they're living in your property and they're, they're shitty children and their shitty relatives and their shitty friends are sometimes living in your property even if they're not on the lease and then uh you know you might go to court for six months before you get them kicked out of the house and you might have a judgment that they owe you rent but good luck collecting it so there's so many things that happen um i don't know i found it frustrating and i was managing most of that stuff myself uh sincerely hated it it doesn't mean you can't you can go make money doing this if you're willing to if you're willing to tolerate the abuse from the public, you could go do that. You can go do that too. I just didn't want to. I just didn't enjoy it. Just didn't enjoy it. Um, I, I like REITs. Um, I, I'm going to own more real estate. I own, I own six or something. Yeah, I guess that's right. I own, I own six properties at the moment. And uh, I'll go buy some more. And uh, some of them I'll use for, for personal things or for business things. And uh, some of them will be investments in the future, but you know, when, when, when you have an opportunity to buy REITs like you had, you know, last March, April, even now, you know, where you can buy things for so cheap. Um, I don't know, you know, why, why the fuck would you want to go buy pay retail prices for, you know, premier properties or mediocre properties, and you could go buy some of the best best real estate in the whole world, whether it's offices or rental properties, you know, residential rentals, office rentals, uh, class A shopping malls. You can buy this stuff for less than it costs to build. You can buy this stuff for, I mean, at, at steep discounts every once in a while. So why do you want to go pay retail for something where you could buy, buy land that you, you know, probably would never have the opportunity to buy as an individual, but you could be part owner in. You basically get a professional management company um, I, don't know, I, I think it's, it's it's silly money. There's so much there's so much extra money there. Uh, I like it. I like it. Uh, Aaron says, uh, Derek, when you receive multiple offers on your land that is four times the market price, and you do not want to sell it, um, the course taught me that if you're offering four x the price, is not the lowest price they are willing to go and uh, they're betting on you getting emotional and excited uh, from the offer and sell it. What does it say about the market value of the land and how should one approach dealing with buyers uh, not turning cold and maybe reconsider, maybe it's uh, maybe five to seven years down the line? Um, well, it depends. As you might imagine, you say, well, it depends. You know, what could you buy other land that you consider you know, equally good? What would it cost you right now? And are the offers you're getting above or beneath you know, that, that price? And um, 
you know, if you had that money, what would you do with it? What's, what's the opportunity cost of holding the land and, and saying no to the money versus taking the money and foregoing the land? So um, think of the opportunity cost. Think of uh, replacement cost, you know, as part of that opportunity cost equation. And, um, you know, they're not making any more land, you know. Land is, uh, land is a pretty damn static thing. So if you got good land, um, nothing wrong with holding on to it, you know. Nothing wrong with holding on, but nothing wrong with selling it under the right circumstances. Depends what your, I guess that's one more element. What are your intentions with the land? What are your intentions with that property? Do you, do you, is there a reason that you'd want to hold it for a long period of time? Or does it make sense to, uh, to let it go and uh, take the cash and do something else with the cash? So it could be any of those things. Could be any of those things. And, you know, I, I, and it, it depends on the market and it depends on your personal taste and preferences of what do you want to do with the stuff. Jimmy again says, I'm looking at some hospitality and commercial properties with impaired income streams and are distressed at the property level due to lockdowns in Canada. Post-COVID, the area is great. In looking at the market across the border, uh, things seem to be fully, looked, fully booked across the border in New York. These sellers want pre-COVID prices, but it's very clear the property's value is impaired due to the income uncertainty, and the seller uh, should not be over, uh, over leveraged. Any thoughts on how to nudge the seller price downward to reflect actual property value, or should I focus on other concessions that might add up to the same uh, amount of value? Well, if you can do that with other concessions, that might be the path of least resistance, uh, depending on the circumstance. I don't know every nuance, obviously, uh, but that, that might be the path of least resistance, as you say. And um, yeah, you know, if you got somebody that's just irrational, just like, let them be irrational. You want to find somebody, find they got a distressed property, as you say, at the property level, but you need to find, a, even better is finding a distressed seller that their personal finances are distressed. They got a good property with, you know, personal financial distress. It'd be an ideal situation, wouldn't it? So you got a fantastic property and, you know, they're going to lose their home if they don't sell their, their business or something of that nature. And, uh, you know, They'd rather sell the business, so for better or worse. So that'd be more ideal. And these they exist in every market. In every market, there's some business guy, you know, gets a dope habit, becomes an alcoholic, going through a divorce. In every economy, good or bad, there's people out there that, that create financial distress uh, in their lives, you know, and financially distressed circumstances in their lives. And uh, you know, if it's not this person, if, they're, if they want to behave irrationally, let them. And maybe they're behaving rationally, by the way, because just for the same reason you'd like to buy it, maybe they think too that, hey, the things are opening up, it's going to look good in a couple months, why the fuck would I sell it for less than what I think it's worth? So um, find the balance if it's worth pursuing. You know, the other thing is just put money in their face, just make them, make them a clear offer, so you know, I can do this, I can pay cash, we can close by this date. Say yes or no. And if they're not excited about it, don't worry about it. Go find a different deal. And if you can't find a better deal, if that's really your best deal and you're hell-bent on doing a deal, then you've got to make a decision. Well, it, you know, should I do this deal? It seems like the best one. Or should I just wait and do a different deal in the future? You know, whatever it might be. Whatever might come across your desk. Or whatever you might happen to go chase down. Thanks for watching. Success is not for everybody and it may not be for you. But if you're a current or future champion, if you have what it takes to win, and you are dedicated to a life of more winning, more success, a life of abundance with other people that have shared values to learn more and earn more, if that's you, you're gonna wanna follow this channel. You're gonna wanna watch my video releases every Monday and every Friday. I look forward to working with you in the future. I'll see you back here soon.